feel very 80s today. The sweatshirt, blue eyeliner, you guys probably can't see it. Feeling the 80s vibes, guys. Hello everyone and welcome back to Guitar by Emily. Today we're doing a Q&A so you guys can get to know me a little bit better. I've been at YouTube for about seven months now and uh, currently I've got a little over 6,000 subscribers as of making this video. So I figured 6,000 of you might want to get to know me a little bit better instead of me just sitting down and playing songs for you guys all the time. So today we're going to do part one of a q and I did a Q&A on my Instagram to celebrate 5,000 subscribers, so thank you for that. It was a live stream, and after the fact, I was unable to upload it to YouTube like I wanted to. So there were many of you who obviously wanted to see, and I don't wanna leave you out. So we're gonna go through the same questions today. Hopefully my answers are about the same. I don't remember how I responded to everything, so maybe some of the questions won't match up. I don't know if you are the same way, but my answers regarding bands, guitarists, songs, are constantly changing because you know you've always got a different like favorite song and a different favorite band at least that's how I am so if I don't answer everything exactly the same as in the uh, Instagram stream then just forgive me on that one you know uh, things like that tend to change with me very often <laughs> so uh, again make sure you like subscribe join the family here I am so thankful for everyone who has hopped on board to my guitar journey and supports me week after week with all of my videos so today we're going to be talking a little bit more about my guitar journey uh, questions more about me as a guitar player and I'm also going to give you guys some updates for the channel and just talk about some projects that I'm working on and then in part two of the Q&A we're going to talk a little bit more about bands I like, guitarists, and gear, and a little bit more of things like that. So I tried to kind of split these up into categories. Some of them kind of cross over and there's really no set category but I'm old school. I wrote down the questions on paper so I've got two sheets of paper for both parts of the video so um, I thought it'd be better to just split it up like that so it's a little bit more of a manageable video. I talked on the live stream for about an hour so um, definitely going to split this up into two videos. So I'm super excited to get going today so grab yourself a coffee or whatever you like and maybe a snack and let's just sit down and chat today about all these questions you guys asked. And speaking of, I did get all these questions from my Instagram, so these questions are coming from you guys, and I thank you so much for participating and asking them. All right, so before I answer the first questions, I wanna give you guys just a little bit of an update of things to expect coming up on my channel. Um, I'm thinking this video is going to be coming out April 5th, so hopefully you're watching on Friday, April 5th, and hopefully I got this uploaded by that day. Um, then the next week will be part two, so that covers the next two weeks of videos and but after that we are getting into finals week at college and I have definitely been practicing some covers for you guys but they are more complicated than some of the other ones I've been doing I'm trying to get everything really tight and make sure that everything I post is clean and it sounds really good so I know I've been posting a cover about every week but now that I'm getting into some harder songs and really tightening up my quality we might not get a cover every week, so please expect that. Please be okay with that. I'm not shutting you guys out at all or saying, oh, I'm not gonna be posting much anymore. That is not the case. You can expect something from me every week, even if it's just a reel or a couple reels or maybe a video where I'm just talking like today and not playing. You can see something from me every week and I am going to keep consistent with that. But with school kind of coming to a close, at least for this semester, I'm gonna be going out of town some, things like that. I might not get a chance to film as much as I'd like and so if I miss a Friday and I just post a short or something like that, please just be okay with that. It's kind of unrealistic to post a full length cover every week, that's just a lot and frankly I might run out of some songs, at least in my skill level right now, that I can play for you guys if I keep that up. So. There's gonna be a lot of content coming. I have so much planned for you guys. A lot of fun videos where we test out products or go through songs or all kinds of fun stuff that isn't just me playing, but don't worry, there's still plenty of covers coming. I'm working on four right now, so get excited for those. Those are gonna be really good. Uh, hopefully, I hope you like them. But, so I kinda just wanted to say that um, 
as part of this video is kind of like an updating you guys on what's going on just so if you don't see me posting a cover every Friday you'll understand what's going on and I hope you understand that explanation I just wanted to get that out there just so you guys know what's going on I am a busy college student and YouTube is something that takes a lot more time than just sitting down and playing a song it can take me up to six hours to edit a video so uh, being a youtuber and a college student is kind of a lot sometimes so just keep that in mind also summer's coming up so we're gonna have plenty of time to film and things like that so I don't want to worry you guys and think that I'm gonna completely disappear or anything that is not the case you're gonna still be seeing from me all the time but uh, just updating you the content might change just a little bit but my goal is to at least post two to three covers per month so you guys are gonna get full length covers every month and lots of reels so don't worry about that hopefully I didn't scare anyone thinking I'm like already gonna quit YouTube or anything no we're still going but uh, maybe just a little bit different sometimes so keep that in mind all right I think that it was enough updating I've been talking for six minutes and we haven't answered any questions yet so hopefully you're still here we're gonna answer these questions now so first question is when did you start playing guitar okay I started playing guitar see I don't even know <laughs> No, I started playing guitar in 2021. I believe that is correct. Sometimes all these years start running together with like COVID and quarantine happening and school getting shut down. It's like from 2020 to 2022, I don't know dates. I don't know what was going on. It all just kind of ran together. But I do believe it was January of 2021 when I did first start picking up the guitar. Um, a few more of you guys asked kind of how I started my guitar journey, who inspired me. So we're going to group all those questions into one and I'm going to talk about why I started playing guitar. Some of you guys have already heard this. Um, I was with my dad on New Year's Eve and it was B2020 turning 2021 New Year's Eve and KISS was playing like a charity show in Dubai because of COVID and quarantine. It was an online show just to kind of encourage everyone and to kick off their end of the road tour. And we had nothing to do, so we decided to watch that. So we watched that all evening and I was getting to see the guitar playing and I really, really loved it. Something about it just clicked. I absolutely fell in love with Paul Stanley's guitars as well. I thought they were really cool, especially the purple uh, mirror cracked Iceman. That guitar is really beautiful. And so that was the first time that I had really like visually watched guitar playing like that. It's nothing that I'd ever paid attention to before, but something that night just clicked in my brain like, wow, I really want to be able to do that. Like, how cool would it be to play electric guitar? So it was not long after that concert that I was playing guitar, learning from YouTube, trying to learn everything I could. We're going to talk a little bit later about my first guitars. But uh, so yeah, that's how the journey started. So I can, I can say Kiss is why I started playing guitar. Maybe why I wore this shirt today. I absolutely love this sweatshirt, but I really love Kiss and the guys of KISS are so awesome and I think it's awesome that they are the ones who originally inspired me to play guitar. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and talk about my first guitar. I'm not going to pull it out and show it to you guys because I want to make a full video on my first guitar. Um, I will tell you the story of it though. Um, when I really quickly decided that I wanted to play guitar, I found out that my brother, when he was about 13, uh, wanted an electric guitar. We're 13 years apart in age. 14? 14, sorry. Goodness, I don't even know what I'm saying today, guys. <laughs> We're 14 years apart, so I wasn't, you know, I wasn't aware that he tried to play electric guitar, but he did and it didn't last, and the guitar got put up in the storage, you know, and I found out that we still had it. So I remember one morning, uh, it was still on Christmas break because it was like the first couple days of January. I got up and I decided I was going to go find that thing and drag it out of the storage and start playing. So I did, I found it and I remember sitting in my living room, uh, pulling out the amp that came with that guitar and I don't even know what I did. I didn't look anything up on YouTube. I know that I just sat down with it and plugged it in and had headphones on. So. I'm not sure what I played that day. I don't even remember, but I remember sitting down in my living room and thinking, this is going to be awesome. I'm going to learn how to do this. And it was such an exciting moment. It felt different than other things I've done in the past. From the very beginning, it just felt like something I knew I wanted to do. 
So that that's a really fun memory. I really, really like thinking about that. So the guitar was a very cheap, like $200 or less with the amp and guitar Fender guitar. So we're gonna talk about that in another video though. So I don't wanna show it to you guys or anything. Um, but that was my first guitar and I played with that for um, five months, maybe something like that. And for my 16th birthday that year, um, in May, my grandparents bought me my Bonnie Pink PRS, you can see back there. Uh, didn't turn out being the perfect guitar for me, but I really cherish that guitar, and it has some amazing memories tied to it, so I, I don't think I could ever get rid of it. Um, I'm very thankful to my grandparents for doing that. I think they could see, and my parents could see, that I was very serious about learning guitar. It wasn't just a little fad that I was going through that I was going to grow out of or anything. They knew I was serious about it and I appreciate them really wanting to help me out and get me started with some good gear. So they've been very, very supportive of my entire journey and I'm very, very thankful for everything they've helped me out with and provided for me. Okay, here's an awesome question and I get this question a lot. What do you use for tone? So unless I specify otherwise in my YouTube videos, I use a positive grid spark for my tone for everything. If I can advocate one product for you guys, one thing that's going to help you out, it is getting a positive grid spark product. I'm obsessed with these amps, guys. I They should get me on board as like an endorser or something, a sponsorship, because I love them. I will tell anyone to buy a spark amp because I think they're the best out there. Now, I mean, I've never been like a gigging or touring musician, so I can't really speak for that. I'm pretty sure they have equipment that works great for touring guitarists, but at least for what I'm doing or playing in your room or small gigs, Sparks are amazing. I have uh, the Spark 40, Spark Mini, Spark Go, Spark Cab, Spark Foot Switch. Is that all the Spark gear I have? I think that's it. But, oh my goodness. Uh, the tone I'm using, obviously, I've, I kind of went on a tangent there. I got so excited about the amps, but the tone I'm using, obviously, is coming from the Spark app. Um, it's on the Tone Cloud. It's linked in my Instagram bio, and I think it's in my YouTube bio. If it's not there, let me know. Comment, and I will link it for you. Um, it's just a tone that I made about six months ago, and you guys seem to love it. Everyone, that's a comment that makes me so happy to read when someone says, Oh, your tone is killer. I love that tone. I feel very proud when I hear that because I made it and I worked on it and I love it and I I, I don't think I'm going to be changing it anytime soon because I'm very happy with it. So I love it when you guys say that you're enjoying the tone and if you want to use it make sure you go snag that um, in the tone cloud on the spark. So long answer on that one, I got a little excited but I use spark amplifiers <laughs> and positive grid if you're ever watching you know. You could hook me up with some products if you ever want to, and I will advertise. <laughs> Next question asks, how do I learn to play different songs? This is something that I could make a whole video on, and if you would like me to maybe take you through my process, get a guitar out, and we can just sit and jam, and I can teach you this, then that would be perfect. I'd love to make that video, but a little bit of a shorter answer. Um, I use both tabs and ear training. I believe it's very important to use your ears. I don't think it's necessarily important to know how to read tabs. It just helps those of us who cannot just sit down and hear a song and know exactly how to play it. You need a little bit of a crutch, a little bit of help. Um, but don't solely rely on the tabs to learn a song because that way you're not being able to distinguish between are these good tabs or bad tabs? Am I really learning the song the way that it's supposed to be played? You need to be able to recognize with your ear uh, when you're reading a tab, if there's a wrong note, if it's playing the wrong version of a chord, if there's just something not right about the tab. And I think it's important to, once you sit down with a song, before you look at anything, just try to see what you can come up with on your own. Just try to flesh out those chords. Maybe try to figure out a little bit of that solo. You don't have to have it all figured out just by your ear immediately. You know, I've been playing for three years. I know that I'm not gonna be like Steve Vai and sit down and be able to play anything. I need a little bit of help. So I use tabs for that, but I also am constantly aware that I need to train my ear and I want to get better at ear training and being able to pick up on things on my own. So I do try my best to work on that. Um, but I guess my method is 
to just sit down, listen to the song, figure out what I can, grab a tab, see if the tab is correct, you know, use my ears, listen, uh, see what I can change about the tab if I need to, and then really just playing the song with a metronome set to the tempo of the song, and then adding in a backing track. Um, if you're wondering about backing tracks, I use Moises software to make all of my backing tracks. All you do is upload your song, uh, just the original song. You can do it off YouTube Music, uh, Apple Music, Spotify, wherever you download or buy music. Um, you can also screen record the songs off of YouTube and use the recording audio. That's a little bit of a cheat code, so keep that on the down low. But you can do that and upload the music and it'll separate it all out. You can take out drums, vocals, keyboards, bass, acoustic and electric guitar. You can separate all that stuff out and it's really helpful. So a few of you have asked what I do for my backing tracks and that's what I use for that. Check it out. I can link it in the description if you guys want to check out that software. So I use that to make my tracks and I jam along with that also to help me learn songs. So hopefully that answered your question about how I work on songs. Who were your early influences? Okay, so we know that KISS was a very early influence because they were the first influence. But I would say after KISS, I very quickly found Eddie Van Halen and I wanted to be able to do what Eddie could do. Uh, I think I saw Eruption first. I saw it live. I'm pretty sure my dad actually showed it to me. We like to watch YouTube videos together and he pulled it up on the TV one day when we were watching YouTube and I'm pretty sure my jaw hit the floor. I was just like, what? I've never seen anything like this and how do I do that? So Eddie was a huge inspiration. I remember early on uh, sitting in my room trying to riff around on like Panama and stuff like that. Um, I had a friend at the time who had been playing longer than me and he was better than me. And he would always come over and show off Eddie Van Halen riffs. Maybe not in the nicest way. He was kind of like showing off, like saying like, look what I can do and you want to do it, but you can't do it. But, you know, anyways, so I really wanted, that was maybe some extra motivation to learn to play some Van Halen riffs. Um, but yeah, Eddie was a big early influence. Um, Richie Sambora, um, still, uh, all these guys are still a huge influence, but I'm just trying to think about people who maybe were the first guitarist I discovered. Uh, Richie Sambora, I've always really loved Bon Jovi. Um, and Richie's songs were... A little bit more attainable uh, I think like living on a prayer stuff like that is a little bit uh, easier for a beginner to pick up on so I definitely tried to study his style out and learn some of those songs so I'd say those two were my big early influences and of course it just sno snowballed from there and I found all the other incredible guitarists that I love now favorite guitar easy one easy 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 question my white gem premium she is back there looking gorgeous you guys probably can't see her but i love that guitar so much i love talking about it i just something about that guitar i feel like if there's guitarists watching you're the only ones that are going to understand the connection with like your favorite guitar uh and if you do play guitar you know what i'm talking about there's a guitar that if something happened to it, you would probably just quit altogether because you love it so much. <laughs> Seriously, something about that gym. I got it about a year ago, maybe, maybe a year and a half ago. I don't remember. Uh, but it was my first guitar that I purchased on my own. So maybe that has something to do with the attachment with it. But I've spent so many hours with that guitar and it just feels connected to me. It feels it just feels perfect for me. I would not change a thing about that guitar. I just love it so much. I can't even put it into words how much I love that guitar. It's like my entire life. That guitar. I love it so much. So yes, that's my favorite guitar. <laughs> Someone else asked what's my favorite guitar pedal. Um, It's a little bit hard because pedals are so fun. How do you pick a favorite one? Because they all do different things. But I think my favorite is my Strymon Digital Delay. 
It's the pink Strymon. It's supposed to have an 80s vibe to it, sound 80s, and it definitely does. I think it's a really great delay pedal. You just set it up and it's super easy to set up. Um, pretty much all the tones sound good on it. Um, I've used delay pedals before where you can really get the settings messed up and it sounds terrible. This pedal, it's kind of hard to mess it up. It just sounds good no matter what. And if you're looking for that really dreamy, like white snake delay sound, um, you're really gonna love that pedal. It's a little pricey, but if you can get it used, it's not so bad. I got mine used and I really, really love that one. What was the first song you learned on guitar? I remember the first song I learned was I Remember You by Skid Row. This was on acoustic guitar, so not the solo or anything like that. This was the first song that I was able to strum along with. Um, I really love Sebastian Bach. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like Skid Row. So uh, my mom also really likes that song. So that was like the first song that I really wanted to be able to play because I just love it. It's, it might be my favorite 80s ballad. So I remember sitting uh, in biology class uh, when we were doing school from home because of COVID and the schools were shut down and I was sitting with my Zoom meeting open and the microphone off and the camera off just practicing that song because we weren't really learning anything. So I just decided extra practice time. So <laughs> that's a fun memory uh, of that time, just learning that song. Uh, that was awesome. So yeah, that was the first song I learned. First solo I learned was Living on a Prayer. Uh, bon Jovi, of course, it did not sound like Richie Sambor playing it when I learned it, but I think I've improved upon it now. If you want to check that out, I've got Living on a Prayer cover, lots of other 80s covers on my channel. Here's a good question. Uh, Kyla asked this one. I know Kyla, so love answering questions from all of you, but it's sometimes fun when people I know ask questions, or at least people I've known through social media. She asked, was it hard being a beginner at guitar? That's a hard question because starting anything new is difficult. It's hard to decide what you're going to practice, what you're going to work on when you know nothing, when you have the vast sea of YouTube at your disposal and there's so many different opinions on what you should learn first and what you need to know and different ways of doing things. So it's, I would call it overwhelming being a beginner. There's so much, and I'm still, I'm still learning so much. I'm probably still a beginner. I've only been at this three years. So it's still overwhelming at times, but I feel much more directed now. I feel like I'm developing my own voice on the guitar. I'm currently, we're gonna talk about this later, but I'm currently writing some music. So I feel like I've got a little more direction now, but as a beginner, I just kind of started out with nothing so that was the hardest part, I suppose, figuring out what I was gonna work on, what I was gonna learn. But nothing's hard if you love it. So I guess that's kind of my answer on that one. I loved it from the beginning. So it never felt like work. It always just felt like I was working towards where I wanted to be and I still feel like that. So yes, it's hard at times. You get frustrated with little techniques and stuff, but I don't think it's, I don't think it was ever like work or it never felt like a job. Yeah, I guess that's what I have to say about that. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> okay, uh, here's just kind of a more general question. Uh, other guitar influences. So I will just, I guess, briefly mention some. I could talk all day about these guys. So I'm gonna try not to get into why I like them too much because it could go on all day. But let's see, George Lynch, Dawkin, Lynch Mob, just George Lynch. He's incredible, absolutely insane. I love his style. His vibrato technique sounds different than anyone else's playing style. So aggressive. His tone is to die for. Why doesn't, I mean, if you don't like George Lynch, then do you even like guitar? <laughs> Steve Vai, favorite guitarist, which that might be on here. We might be talking about that later. Not sure, but we're mentioning him now. It's Steve Vai. Who doesn't like Steve Vai? He is the king of instrumental guitar. Uh, guitar virtuoso playing is so melodic that is what I love about it how different it is and how absolutely beautiful beautiful doesn't even cover his style I just love it so much I could listen to Steve I all day Joe Satriani similar to Steve but he has a little bit more of like a funky bluesy a little bit more of a fun style than Steve Steve is like very not classical but like classy I guess he's very polished, very, 
his music flows. Uh, I feel like Joe has a little bit more of like an upbeat, fun vibe. Not that Steve doesn't have a fun vibe, but I think you guys know what I'm saying here. Uh, but both of those guys, insane. And I'm going to see them on tour in a couple weeks. So I'm so excited to see both of them. Uh, Eddie Van Halen, we already talked about him. Uh, his tapping techniques, awesome. I know he didn't invent tapping, but he it, he mastered it. <laughs> and he really showed us what you could do with it. So I take a lot of inspiration for like tapping licks and things like that from Eddie. Uh, Richie Sambora, Warren D. Martini, Cece DeVille, Joe Perry, Vito Brada, so underrated, I love Vito. I really wish he was still making music and with White Line because I'd really, really love to see them live. Um, Ingve Malmsteen, how could you leave out Ingve? Bruce Kulik, Tommy Thayer, Reb Beach from Winger. Someone I think is very talented that I don't actually know their name right now, it's slipping my mind. The guitarist of Firehouse, I think that he did incredible work with them. I really like Firehouse. Uh, Cinderella's guitar work with Tom Kiefer, and I'm not sure the name of their other guitars, but their guitar is awesome. So many influences, I'm just kind of naming all the guys that I like to listen to. I mean, pretty much any of the guys from the 80s that were in the big hair metal bands, you could mention them. I mean, they're just, they were all good. and. I, don't, I can't really hate on any of them. Like, you you weren't a guitarist in a hair metal band unless you could shred and you were good. And even though the hair metal thing kind of got, I don't think it got out of proportion. Everyone says it got too big and the songs were getting too cheesy and the makeup was too much and everything. I think it could have stayed the same and it never could have ended and grunge never had to come on the scene. But that's kind of what people uh, said about it and they said that everyone was starting to sound the same. I don't agree with that. I think that everyone had their own voice and especially the guitar players. I mean, it's the same style of music so you're gonna find some of the same elements, but it wasn't the same. These guys all were musicians. I think people forget that part about it. They just listen to the rock music and it sounds cool, but these guys were musicians. Everyone in a band back then could play. The singers could actually sing without auto-tune. The guitar players had to be able to play and they had to be able to shred live because these bands were not just studio musicians that released their music on a platform. They were out there doing it every night. So I gotta hand it to the musicians of the 70s and 80s and early 90s. It, it's a different time. It is an absolutely different time and we're never gonna be able to go back to it just because of the way social media has gotten and the way you can produce music without a band now i it's crazy it's crazy so yeah so many guys i can mention i kind of got off track on that question talking about uh other guitar influences but yeah <laughs> this one's not related to guitar but what is my favorite movie uh top gun um i really love like the classic 80s movies like back to the future if it has Tom Cruise in it, I probably love it. So yeah, but Top Gun is my all time favorite movie. All right, someone asks, what are some other hobbies I have other than playing guitar? Um, I play piano. I've played piano for longer than I've played guitar. Um, I like to draw. I've drawn since I could pick up a pencil. I love drawing and painting and all of that stuff. I'm definitely more of a creative person. I've never really been into sports or anything like that so definitely more on the creative side of things um i do love working out you know going to the gym that's such a a good time to just kind of take care of myself and zone out from everything else kind of like when playing guitar you just kind of take that time and you focus on what you're doing and you just kind of leave everything else out of it it's a really good time to just take for myself to kind of clear my head so love working out been doing that for about two and a half years and work out six days a week so yeah i love that that's i guess a hobby <laughs> i like cooking cooking's fun and i'm a full-time college student so that takes up a lot of time <laughs> and then this one kind of goes along with that do you play any other instruments like i just said i play piano i've played for about eight years this is a good question
This is a good question. Are you more patient or frustrated when it comes to learning new guitar skills? I'd like to say I'm patient, everyone gets frustrated, but my mindset is, is when you're working on something new, you're not gonna sit down and automatically be a pro at it. You're gonna have to put the work and the time in it. And if you have a positive attitude, you're gonna make progress a lot faster. Um, so I try to be patient when I'm learning new things. I try not to get frustrated and just think of it all as a journey and you have to spend time on things to get better at it. Oh, this is a very deep question from Joseph Henry Official. If you guys don't follow him, he's a really good guitar player. He's my age. He's a lot better than me at guitar, but go follow him on YouTube and Instagram. We did a collab together as well. But Joseph asked, where do you see yourself in 10 years? What a hard question, <laughs> but it's a good one. So um, I don't have a perfect plan, but I would like to still be doing YouTube, social media. I don't know to what extent, whether it will be more of a, a job type thing, if I can make some extra money with it. I am monetized right now, so I am making some money, um, which I'm very, very thankful for. Um, but I am in nursing school right now, so I'm gonna be a nurse and I'm very excited about that and having that as a career. Um, I don't have a ton of plans as where I'm gonna be at in 10 years, you know, I'm gonna get through my schooling and things like that and there a lot can happen in the next few years. So I'm not quite sure after that, but those are my goals and where I'm headed right now. I also would really like to have a dog. I don't have a pet right now and I've really been wanting a dog. So hopefully I'm uh, able to get a pet in the next 10 years. Here's a question. Have you ever been in a band? No, I've never been in a band. Um, I guess the closest thing to a band experience I've ever been involved in is I got to play with that Irina Rock show. They called me on stage at one of their concerts and that was so much fun because it was my first time playing with a full band and the energy is insane when you're actually up there with other people playing live music. I love the feeling of that, just feeding off of each other's energy and that was one of the coolest experiences ever. Um, so maybe someday I'll be in a band. I'd like to be in a band. I just personally don't know anyone right now who plays instruments or even likes the same kind of music that I like, except like one person that's my photographer. <laughs> so um, yeah, so maybe one day it'll happen. We'll see, you know, that's another one of those things. You just kind of got to see what happens in the future. Someone asks, can you sweep pick? That's something I'm working on. Uh, I also think that's a technique that's gonna take a lot of time. And some people have been playing for 10 years and they can't sweep pick. So it's something I'm working on, but I'm not stressing out that I can't like really do it yet. I guess the closest I've come to sweep picking is the little mini sweep in the final countdown solo. I've been working on that. Um, but um, yeah, just kind of loosely working on it. I try to work on all kinds of picking techniques just so I learn as much as I can. Uh, a few people have asked how long do I practice a day? Uh, that obviously varies from day to day. I think my perfect amount of time, like if I could set it up perfectly, is two hours a day. Uh, that sounds like a lot. Some people that might not sound like a, maybe you practice more, maybe you practice less, but for me, the amount of time I need to do everything I want to do in a practice session is about two hours. I can do it in one, but I'm not checking all the boxes, I suppose, for a very well-rounded practice session. Typically, I like to cover chromatic exercises, picking exercises, obviously work on songs. I like to work on writing my own riffs and songs in a session. Um, it's tailored to whatever I'm working on at the time, but those are kind of the things that I like to check off in a practice session. Um, I believe that practicing 15 minutes a day is enough to make uh, a lot of improvement though. So as long as you're picking up the guitar every day and you're intentionally practicing something instead of just picking it up and playing the same songs that you always play, you're gonna make progress. So don't think that you have to practice for hours a day to be good. Sometimes I practice up to like five hours a day if I have like nothing to do five six hours and sometimes it'll just be 10 minutes so don't beat yourself up if you don't have a ton of time to practice someone asks how often do I break a guitar string not very often at all it's usually when I'm doing something either stupid or if I just haven't changed the guitar strings in a long time and they just finally give out like the other day I I kind of neglect changing the strings on that blue gem back there. I don't know why, I just don't change them as often as I should. 
and I was not doing anything crazy. I wasn't doing a bend or anything and the string just snapped. So that's kind of a case of the string is old and it needed change. Um, another time that I broke a string, I was going a little crazy on the intro to Motley Crue's Kickstart My Heart. So that would be a stupid reason of breaking the string. So that's typically when I do break a string is when one of those two cases. Um, but it doesn't happen very often, like once every six months, maybe, maybe, like maybe not even that often. I try to change my guitar strings every month. That doesn't happen, unfortunately. I know that's bad. I'm not a good guitarist for doing that, but things happen and I have a lot of guitars and it's kind of hard to remember how often I've changed them or when they need it. So I guess I just change them whenever they need it, when I think they need it. Okay, and the last question that we're gonna cover today, this is a fun one, is do you collect uh, the pics from different shows you've been to and can you show them? So yeah, I've got a little Ziploc baggie, it's nothing fancy here, but I do collect the pics that I get from shows. Obviously not every show I get a pic, but this one is from Michael Sweet Striper, when I saw Striper. This one is from Steve Vai from the Inviolate Tour. This one is from Dante Frizziello from the Inviolate Tour. I fought for this one. This one was in the floor and I, it got flung over where I was and I was like, there is no way I'm not getting that. <laughs> and this one I guess is not really a celebrity pick, but this was the pick I played when that Arena Rock show called me on stage. It was my first time on stage, so I thought I'd save the pick as a little keepsake. And so yeah, that's my guitar pick collection from shows. Hopefully I get to add to that um, in the coming years and all the shows that I go to. Last thing I'd like to talk about because we have answered all the questions for today. We've got more for part two, but um, I am working on some original music and I, you guys have been asking about this, so I kind of wanted to talk about it. Now I'm not gonna give anything up right now. I'm not gonna show you anything I've been working on, but I have been working. I. It's such a long and hard process to write something completely original, especially as someone who's not been playing guitar that long. So it's really overwhelming. And also I'm on my own here. I don't have a drummer. I don't have a bass player. I'm programming everything myself. So I don't have anything completed. I don't have any full songs yet. Personally, I've just been learning how to get the stuff into Logic, how to edit it, how to put a song together. And I'm really hoping, fingers crossed, this might not happen, so I kind of hate saying it, but hopefully this summer, at some point this summer, I would like to get one song out, one completed song. And I know that doesn't sound like a big deal, but for me, someone who is starting from scratch and pretty much doesn't even know how to use Logic, that would be insane for me to be able to finish a song that I'm proud enough of to post. So I'm excited about working on that. I'm excited about sharing little clips and stuff with you guys as I get closer to maybe releasing something. Again, I can't make any promises here because I'm not sure, you know, what'll happen with school and time to get something like that done, but that is the goal right now. So hoping to be able to share something with you guys in July or August. So keep your eyes and ears open for that and hopefully we'll be seeing some stuff for that soon. So that was the last little update I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, this video is a little bit longer than I thought so I'm glad I'm splitting it up into two videos. Hopefully you enjoyed this one though. Uh, just getting to sit down and chat and I hope you enjoy. I think it'll be next week when part two is out. So again thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!